What's up everyone? Welcome to Cluster Fun. Danny Cunningham, Manny Hill, Rami Makhlouf on this rainy and gloomy Wednesday. Fortunately for us, we're under a roof as Rami would always prefer. We put a roof on it. <laughs> we did put a roof building. on it. Yep. Should we make it retractable though? So That'd we just great. like open it up. Can you imagine sunny if, we could do, if we could do radio with a bright, wide open sky? I don't know if I, I mean, maybe like a clear roof. I don't know what it would be. I don't, I don't know, know that I want, well, quality. the wind would really, would really screw with it. I don't think it'd be quite as good just of a product. Just in the right conditions. I, I just, I think radio is probably better inside probably. with a, a normal probably roof. Probably controlled conditions for radio. You're maybe we should right start doing cluster fun outside, though. Maybe we should start going. Every once in a while. Though. I think it'd be a we nice a change of picnic pace. bench in the parking lot downstairs. I, I'm, not I'm not opposed. I'm right. not opposed. Not today, though. I do it. no today. No. If there was a retractable roof, yes, it'd be great. <laughs> Over our picnic bench. Yeah. I mean, hey, you never know. You you're all for putting a roof on everything. But I don't think you would stop short of picnic benches. Now, Any, anything you could put a retractable roof over. Maybe it's not economically feasible. Probably not. But it's worth a shot, right? So, so Rami, are you like anti convertibles too? Because you want a roof on everything? No, I want. No, I'm, no, I'm pro convertible. convertible. I like retractable. Oh, because it's, it's a retractable okay. I got roof. You. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Now he you. is. The convertible was the first retractable roof. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he's, he's, he's anti motorcycle. Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I won't ride a motorcycle. Anti motorcycle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Not. The Minnesota yeah. Twins last night they played in a place with a retractable they roof. They did. I don't know if the roof was open or closed last night. But they got a win over the Toronto Blue Jays. They're now 10 games above 500, leading the AL Central by, I believe, four games entering today's action. Just how good can this team be, guys? They are. I thought that they would be pretty good this year. I didn't think that they would be this good, though. I thought this lineup would be pretty good. I didn't think this lineup would be this good. And I certainly didn't expect the pitching staff, Rami, to, to perform as well as it has to this point, and you look at guys like, I mean, we know how good Jose Barrios is. We knew that going into the season, but guys like Martin Perez coming in and giving this team good innings and good mm -hmm. starts, it's been it's been a it's been great to watch this team so far. People called me crazy when I picked the Twins to win the division at the start of the year, and I said I didn't see what everybody saw in the Indians. And the Indians, on top of what I saw at the beginning of the season, have suffered injuries, namely to two of their best starting pitchers. And people are going to think I'm crazy when I say what, what I'm going to say now. This is just on brand for you, though. We, crazy has become on brand. We haven't seen the best of the Twins. Sure. Well, yeah. I, I would I would hope that we haven't seen the best of any Major League Baseball team, considering it's May 8th. Right. So I don't think that that's a... No, but I, I, think, I, do, I, do think that, I do think that a lot of people think this is a flash in the pan. It's a fluke. These, this is just a pop-up, you know, first one or two months for some of these guys. This is absolutely... 100% a plan that was put in place that is coming to fruition. You have guys who are entering their prime years, those mid to late 20s, guys like Polanco and Rosario and Kepler and Buxton. And in addition to that, you added guys like Jonathan Scope and Nelson Cruz and Marwin Gonzalez. And you, you brought in a pitching coach in Wes Johnson who had a very definite plan on how he was going to get just a little bit more out of guys who were already on this roster or who were elsewhere and teams weren't maximizing their potential. This is this is a plan coming together. This isn't just a pop-up. This isn't a fluke. This is exactly what Falvey and Levine and Baldelli and Wes Johnson had in mind when they sat down this offseason and designed the 2018 season, 2019 season. And now the question becomes, as we get closer and closer, I mean, it's it's we're still in early May here, but as we get closer and closer to July 31st, the question will be, will they make a move to try and make themselves even better to try and give themselves an opportunity to maybe make not just make the playoffs but maybe make some noise as well It'll be interesting to see how things sort of transpire over the next couple of months as we get closer to the deadline too and i think there's probably improvement from within coming because guys yeah. this is a team that has lived on the long ball and it hasn't even gotten warm yet it's going to get warm and that ball is going to start flying farther and faster than it already is and that's why i think that there's still more to come from this Twins team, and we haven't seen the best of them. Is this the year in baseball, and, and I should know this, but I'm unsure because baseball's rules are changing at an odd rate, and they're changing in different years. Is this the year where there's only one trade deadline, or does that yeah, not go into effect until next July Do you think that's a good thing for the game or a bad thing for the game? Because if you're going to bring up 
trade deadline acquisitions, it is a different ball game this year. It's not something that we've seen previously because in the past we've seen, you know, the Astros have gone out and added a Justin Verlander six minutes before the waiver deadline mm-hmm. closed. And last year the Indians added Josh Donaldson in on a very similar timetable. Does that change things about when you need to start being aggressive and looking for more talent? I don't think it changes things about when you start, but I do think that it's going to make for a better trade deadline for baseball. And we'll see some of the hype that we see around NBA trade deadline or NBA free agency or the NFL free agency. I think we'll see, we'll get a little taste of that because before there were teams who weren't sure if they were still in it and if they should be buyers or if they should be sellers or if they should stand pat. So they'd sit back and wait. I think making it just one trade deadline at July 31st, if you're anywhere near the playoff picture and you think you have a shot and there's a move to be made, you're going to push the button to make that move. I think there'll be there'll be more action and more competition for these guys who are going to end up hitting the market before the trade deadline. I think it makes it will make things more imminent for teams. I think if like you said, if if a team feels like they can sit back and wait, you know, they they're fielding phone calls, but they feel like, okay, well, we still have, we'll still have the whole month of August too to try and figure something out. Uh, teams are going to be more tempted to pull the trigger on deals as they get closer to July thirty first, as as opposed to previous years. I think. All right, I want to flip to the NBA. Rami's Milwaukee Bucks hold a three one lead. Rami's obviously a lifelong Bucks fan for the last <laughs> thirteen years. <laughs> are really, they... really, it really started when, with Giannis. I'm oh, not so, even going to so lie. Is a, I'm a not life... even going to lie. Rami's a lifelong Bucks fan for the last two years. <laughs> because Giannis wasn't very good for his the first Bulls three are, years. The, I was, I'm a Chicago native. Bulls are still my number oh, one. That's team. why you're wearing all the Cubs stuff. Yeah. No wonder the Bulls are still my number one team. But I adopted the Bucks while I was working there and took a liking to, to Giannis in particular. No, you didn't adopt them while you were working there. You waited 12 <laughs> years into working there. No! Like <laughs> six years into it, seven years into work. There. It was longer than that. Whatever. Can they close it out against the Celtics tonight? It, the game is at Pfizer Forum in Milwaukee. They're up 3-1 in the series. Boston looked terrific in game one and then has not looked anything close to that in the three games since. Yeah, I, I said Bucks and five for the series, and I didn't back off that even when Boston took game one. And I didn't back off it for two reasons. One, I, di- I didn't think that the strategy they used in that game would work time and time again of building the wall, not letting Giannis penetrate the lane, and nobody else was hitting shots. I thought, A, Giannis will find a way to penetrate the lane, and B, other guys will find a way to hit shots. But the other thing was I didn't buy that after all the turmoil – and and drama that surrounded the Celtics and specifically Kyrie Irving all season long that all of a sudden the playoffs started and they found team chemistry and everybody loved each other again. I just was I wasn't buying into that narrative and now we're seeing again a seemingly disgruntled Kyrie Irving doesn't want to talk to reporters and there are reports that there are guys in that locker room who are ready to pack his bags and send him away from Boston this coming off season when he hits free agency. So I didn't think they snapped their fingers and fixed everything that was wrong in Boston, and that's why I never really backed off of it. It, it does look like Kyrie kind of has one foot out the door already, mm-hmm. doesn't he? He's just the last three games, he's just been awful. And I thought for as underwhelming as the Celtics were during the regular season with all the drama and they had a couple of injuries here and there, I thought that Kyrie would be able to come playoff time, Kyrie would be able to turn it on and sort of be the catalyst for this team going on a deep playoff run. And it just, I mean, they they took advantage of a depleted Indiana team that was a nice story of getting to the playoffs without their star player, but Indiana just couldn't score. Not having Victor Oladipo just killed them. I thought the sweep was impressive and the fact that sure. they didn't have a clunker of a game, which they've had three times in this series. Sure, because sure. You thought, sure, Indiana's not what Indiana could be. Indiana doesn't have much of a legitimate chance to win this series, but they're going to get a game or two because Boston is who Boston is. So when Boston took care of business in four games, that was eye-opening to me. And that's and to your point, that's why I thought the Celtics, looking as good as they did against Indiana, I thought that that would carry over into this series. And it's just been, aside from game one, it, it's just been the total opposite. I mean, the Bucks have just dominated them. Kyrie is not playing well. The other guys are not playing well either. And uh, this is this is where the Celtics are at now. Now their their backs are against the wall tonight. I do hope that the Celtics win tonight because if Milwaukee finds a way to win, win in game six in Boston, 
I would very much like the camera shot of Kyrie taking off his jersey in the tunnel <laughs> at the Garden before he leaves the Celtics. I would very much like that to happen. Just like it did with LeBron in 2010. That's what I want to happen. And watch them boo him off the court in Boston. I don't even need that. I just, when he's off the floor and in the tunnel, I want the camera on him taking off his jersey. <laughs> And I want, is this the last time he's going to be wearing a Celtics uniform? And that's exactly what I want. You know what would be interesting, too, if Kyrie does leave Boston, which I think all three of us are kind of anticipating that he'll do? He signs with the Knicks this summer, and how fun would those games be? The Knicks going into Boston with Kyrie wearing the, you know, wearing the Knicks jersey, and that Boston crowd will get on him, certainly. And we know the Knicks and Celtics, that rivalry when both teams are good, it, that's always kind of a fun, exciting rivalry. We really don't know what that's like because the Knicks yeah, it hasn't, been it hasn't good. Yeah, it hasn't. It's been a really long time since we've seen that, but uh, that would that would be a lot of fun next season if that happens. Speaking of the New York Knicks, at Game 4 in the other series I want to talk about today, the Rockets and the Warriors, there was a fan chanting New York Knicks every time Kevin Durant hilarious. touched the ball. Awesome. One, that was amazing. Two, that series is now tied at two games. The guy was really close to a microphone somewhere. But it was awesome. Yeah, it was I really want him amazing. to be closer yeah, to a microphone. No, for sure. And I found out it was a Rockets fan doing it, which was disappointing to me. I was hoping that it was a Knicks fan. A traveling Knicks fan. <laughs> I, I didn't want it to be, like, it's still funny, but I wanted it to be a New York Knicks fan that made the journey to Houston just to get in Kevin Durant's ear. Like, New York Knicks, that's what I wanted. So the Warriors have lost two straight to Houston to tie that series up at two games apiece. Golden State is 5-1 and one under Steve Kerr in playoffs after losing consecutive games. You guys think that they get it done tonight in Oracle? I do think that there's... there's a, there's a little bit of this going on with the Warriors where they're the best basketball team in the world. I don't think there's any question about that. There's when not. I, when everything is clicking and going right, they are the best basketball team in the world, one of the best that I've ever seen. But I think They might be the most talented right, that I've ever seen. And I think maybe even, well, not the best. The Michael Jordan Bulls at one seventy. But I think on paper this team has sure. more talent. Yeah, talented. Like, yes. like Jordan top end was better than anyone on the Warriors, but one through fifteen, I think this Warriors team has Probably. more talent than that Bulls team. And had. I I think sometimes even in the playoffs they they either get a little bit bored or they get a little overconfident mm -hmm. and people start doubting them and then they remind everybody just how good they are and dispense of the team in front of them real quickly. But there's something about this Rockets team that's a little bit different. I mean, remember, remember last year it took, what was it, 27 straight missed threes? And a Chris Paul, and Chris Paul missing Chris Paul, yeah. game seven for and the Warriors six. to finish, and game six for them, for them yeah. to finish them off. So I do think that there's something a little bit different about this Rockets team when just matchup-wise that tests the Warriors mm -hmm. a little bit more than others. I think there is a chance that the Rockets could take this. I still think it will be the Warriors, and they'll remind us all how good they are again before all is said and done. But I'm giving the Rockets a chance in this one, which I haven't given anybody a chance in this series against the Warriors since since this run of theirs started, really. I'm just amazed right now at how much, as talented as the Warriors are, you know, top to bottom, I'm just amazed at how much they've had to rely on Kevin Durant just mm -hmm. being unbelievable for them to win games. I mean, Steph has not played well. Steph has not looked like had one good the Steph Curry. Series. Yeah, and you know, and Draymond is being Draymond but how much, you know, outside of his defense and his playmaking he's not scoring a lot for them. So, I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's, been a, that's been an issue. Clay Thompson doesn't look like himself right now. It, it's amazing how you, you think about what if this team did not have Kevin Durant right now? They'd be in Big, big well, if right this now. team doesn't have Kevin Durant, how many championships do they have? Yeah, I don't think we're talking yeah. about a dynasty. We're not talking about a dynasty. I yeah. think that we're talking about a Cavs team that probably wins in 2017. We're talking about a Houston team that definitely gets to the finals in 2018. And, and if the Cavs win in 2017, you don't know if Kyrie Irving's still around. You don't know right. what that looks like. Right. So I think that if Kevin Durant's not there, the Warriors are, are much more of an afterthought. And it's also kind of crazy to think there's a non-zero chance Tonight's the last time a basketball game is ever played inside a work court arena. That's possible. That's a possibility. It's yes. a, a very real possibility. If Houston takes care of business tonight and then wins game six, they're done and that arena is shut down. I, I wonder, because I think last year we talked about the 27 straight missed threes and Chris Paul being out for game seven. James Harden, you know, if he has another, like, all-world performance to 
that could be something that that wins Houston this series. Too. Absolutely. If he comes in and drops forty five and just takes over, even on the road at Oracle, that that could that you know the Rockets can win this series, man. I think so. Like, I, they can seriously win this series. I, I I picked them to win in six. I don't feel as confident now as I did when I made that pick. It was kind of like I made you the, the Rockets. In I six? picked the Rockets oh, wow. in six in the mm. series. And as soon as I like decided, I'm like, that's a bad idea. Like as soon as I press send on the on the thing, <laughs> I don't know that I trust that. Like that's you gotta a bad follow idea. the Herm Edwards mantra of don't don't press send, don't hit send. <laughs> but then and then when game one happened, I'm like, there's no way. And then game two, and then they come back and they win game three and four, and they take care of home court. So I don't know how confident I am in, in them winning tonight, but I'm very excited for this game to get here. These playoffs have been amazing. Yes, they've been. Sure. A lot of fun. I'm so Especially mad. this round. I'm so mad at Boston because I wanted four game sevens, and Boston just not showing up at the TD Garden against Milwaukee essentially did kill that dream. So I'm livid at Brad Stevens and the Boston Celtics. But the other three series have been amazing. They I think Nuggets Blazers is flying under the radar, and I think mm-hmm. both I think those teams and their stars and Lillard and Jokic fly under the radar. But that's also I mean last night was a blowout. Yeah, Denver annihilated yeah. them last. Yeah. Night. That's also been a, a really fun series. Oh, to watch. it's been the NBA playoffs have been in years, which is surprising because you don't have your biggest and best star in the league in LeBron James. Yeah. But the NBA playoffs this year, because you have stars across, you have tight series and good competition, mm-hmm. and there's uncertainty for the first time in a long time that it's not a foregone conclusion that the Warriors are going to run right through the playoffs and win another championship and beat LeBron when they get there. No, I do think it does become a little bit more of a certainty if they find a way to be used. And I'm not Probably. Sure. Yeah. I'm not sure I trust anyone in the East. The East could give a challenge, but I still think that it's Warriors in six. Maybe, I think maybe Toronto would have the best chance against the Warriors just because they've got three legitimate all-defense guys on, on their starting lineup. But it's, I think that if Houston does it, it's going to be... Incredibly interesting. Isn't it amazing when you look at all the, you know, maybe Portland, Denver to a, to a lesser extent, but you look at the other three series, there's so much on the line for all of these teams right now. Like and not, Rock- just, not just in winning the playoffs, but how these teams look in the future. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, Kawhi, what's, Ka- you know, what Kawhi decides to do this summer might depend on what the Raptors do the rest of these playoffs. The Sixers, same thing, like Jimmy Butler, Mm -hmm. Tobias Harris. What's going to happen with those guys, depending on, that could depend on what the Sixers do. Mm -hmm. You know, the Warriors, there's so much speculation about Kevin Durant. Even Houston, you know, you kind of wonder with where Houston is at age-wise, with like Chris Paul, you kind of wonder if the Rockets are getting close to that. This is kind of their last hurrah. This is their shot. You know what I mean? Even though James Harden is in his prime, but Chris Paul is... In approaching his mid thirties, and you got to wonder if this is sort of the last hurrah for him as as a significant player in the league. So and there's there's a lot of there's a lot of legacies that are on the line, and futures of the future of the league could be changed in so many different ways depending on what happens in these series. And to add to that, the Milwaukee Bucks are going to be facing the luxury tax this summer, and if yep. they don't get where this that ownership group thinks they can get, if they don't win a title or come very close to winning a title, they might not be comfortable going into that luxury tax. Right. And that's something that could affect the, the next five years of that franchise, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, thanks for watching Cluster Fun. Had a blast today. Hope you're inside staying away from the rain or at least under a roof. Retractable roof. Yes, that too.